crypto bull run is over. Or at least that's the impression you may get when you look at YouTube or recent posts on Twitter or X. Certainly the last couple of weeks have been pretty nasty. So is this actually the end of this market cycle? In this video, I will look at this scenario, which is certainly one of the possibilities, but also I will look at what else may happen over the next few months. I'm Andy, and this is Crypto Like a Pro, a channel where I talk about everything crypto, NFTs, and Web3 related. When you look at the price of Bitcoin over the last couple of weeks, it may certainly seem like this may be the end of this market cycle, or at least the situation is not looking great at the moment. Not only the price dipped from over 70k, 72k in fact, all the way down to around 58k at some point, but also we are now noticeably below Bitcoin's bull market support band. This is 20 week simple moving average, so average price of Bitcoin over the last 20 weeks, so approximately five months. And currently the price is noticeably below it, which means that there's certainly bearish sentiment in the market. But does it mean that the bear market is back? Well, that's one possibility. At the end of the day, we had new all time high, barely because it was only about 10% above or 5% above the previous all time high. But you could argue that that's it for this market cycle and, and now we are in early stages of a bear market. Everything is possible in crypto, but I think this is an extremely unlikely scenario. If that was to be true, it essentially means that everything we know about crypto, everything that happened over the last three, four market cycles, basically is no longer valid. It would mean that crypto now behaves in a completely new way and it's completely unpredictable. Possible, but rather unlikely to happen. What's much more likely is the scenario I've been talking about for the last couple of years, or even as recent as March of this year, when Bitcoin had this massive run up, it was way too early in the market cycle. The fact that we hit new all time high before the halving was, was certainly the first ever. And there were two possibilities then, and I talked about it in, in March. One was that we will continue going up, that this market cycle is something completely different. Well, maybe not continuously going up, but essentially that we are in those early stages of the next crypto bull run and we'll have a massive, massive move up, blow off top, and the market cycle will finish probably in late 2024. Or the second scenario, the one that was, in my opinion, more likely and in fact better, is that we will repeat previous market cycles. We have this big move up in anticipation of the halving. We will then have some sort of a pullback around the halving and possibly quite a slow summer, which is quite often the case with crypto. And then in late 2024, maybe even early 2025, we'll see that big parabolic move up around six months or more after the halving, as it was the case in the previous market cycles. Anything earlier than that would mean that this market cycle is completely different. And if anything, market cycles when it comes to crypto are getting longer. So you'd expect that this parabolic move up should occur even later rather than earlier in the market cycle. If you look at my videos I posted throughout the bear market, you will see that I very often mention that 2024 will likely be quite a slow year. And it's only late 2024, probably whole of 2025, maybe even early 2026, when we'll see the proper bull run. Of course, I was partially wrong. We had this massive move up early in 2024. Certainly this move was much bigger than anything I anticipated. We had slash have meme coin mania earlier this year, which again, I didn't expect it, but at the same time, this is not that unusual in those early stages of the bull run. If we go back to the previous market cycle, we had DeFi summer before Bitcoin hit new all time highs. Also, even before Bitcoin hit new all time high towards the end of, I think it was late 2020, we saw a lot of interest around NFTs. I mean, it was still very, very early, early stages when I say a lot of interest, it was very, very niche, but it already started happening. We had those indicators of what may be big in that upcoming market cycle and it certainly was DeFi, NFTs, 
and then there were some other elements. We've already seen in early stages of this market cycle that, well, meme coins seem to be the thing, but also crypto gaming and AI coins. And I very much still think that we'll have a slow summer, potentially it may be quite slow towards even the end of this year. And only then we'll have this big move up and it will continue throughout most of next year, possibly even longer. And I still think that crypto gaming and AI will be where a lot of the gains will be made. I said many times that I'm not really into meme coins, but of course that also seems to be quite a thing, separate thing. I won't be really talking much about that. So that's basically what I think is happening here. We are just experiencing this pullback in this relatively low, slow summer and the big parabolic move up, which will completely overtake anything that happened here, that will happen later this year. In other words, we are perfectly on track. No surprises here. Of course, it's never fun to see a move like this, especially that we are trending quite nicely up here. As, as you can see, I draw this trend line. That was our support. And then we broke it here, acted as a resistance for a couple of days, and then we just kept going down. What was the reason for this big drop right here? Well, it's all largely around what we heard from Fed a couple of days ago. Basically, the market was expecting that Fed will start cutting interest rates around mid this year, June, July. As inflation is coming down, interest rates should also start coming down. Unfortunately, what we heard is that although the inflation is coming down, the Fed still requires more evidence in order to start cutting down interest rates. The market was not expecting this, and this resulted in, in a crash. So to quickly sum it up, what we are experiencing here is basically just the usual crypto market volatility, bit of an overall slowdown, plus the fact that interest rates are not going to be cut as early as the market was expecting. That's why we had this biggest drop here. Otherwise, we would be actually sitting around the Bitcoin's bull market support band. And I wonder, in fact, it's pretty much guaranteed that if the interest rates were to be cut, which would be somewhere around here, or that's where we would get this information, we would probably bounce off this line perfectly. Of course, that didn't happen. We dropped below it. So now the next level to watch is this 20-week moving average, which currently sits around 64K. We want to break above it and then establish it as, as support. One other important thing to look at is the fact that we are still in this approximately 60 to 70K range, right? We bounced in this range quite a few times. There were, of course, moments when we dipped below it or were slightly above it. But generally, 60 to 70K seem, seems to be this comfortable range in which Bitcoin's been since February this year, well, pretty much March this year. So as long as we are bouncing roughly between these two boundaries, nothing really is changing, right? It's basically we're just trending sideways, just with a really big amplitude and over a longer period of time. Only when we start breaking below those lows right here, significantly below 60K, and we, are, we don't have quick recovery like we had over the last couple of days, that's when we may start worrying okay, well, what's the next level? And I would say the next level is somewhere in the low 50s, around 52. That was our support resistance level right here. But hopefully we will now start trending up slowly. And then the big question is when we can break above this 70, 72K level, establish it as support and then go up. So essentially what I am looking for is assuming that this is now bounce up. Let's say that we get rejected from it one more time. Then we break above it. And we maybe struggle around that level and then eventually we'll start going up, something like that. It's a terrible line, but you get the idea. Essentially, this is the level where we, where we need to clearly break above it, confirm it as support, go up. Until that happens, nothing really changes. We're just trading sideways. Personally, I think it's a good time to keep stacking Bitcoin, keep stacking Ethereum, get into any altcoins you may be interested in. 
I think that nothing really changes in terms of what's likely to be popular in this bull run. Most likely that it will be revolving largely around crypto gaming and AI. Uh, meme coins will certainly seem to be quite a thing. As I've been saying for a while, I think 2024 will be relatively slow year. Yes, there are opportunities to make money, don't get me wrong. I'm sure that there'll be people saying, oh, you can make a ton of money on meme coins. Sure, you absolutely can. But this, what we've seen so far, is not the crypto bull run, not the proper crypto bull run everyone is expecting. I don't think we'll see that until Bitcoin hits about 100K or above all those altcoins, they will eventually go parabolic and we are simply not quite there yet. We are still in those relatively early stages of the market. So this is essentially where we were in the previous crypto bull run, roughly or the previous market cycle, roughly in mid 2020, right? We had, we had COVID crash, we had halving, we had DeFi summer, and then late towards the end of the year, we had that proper move up. There's this saying, when in doubt, zoom out. If you zoom out, it's very clear how Bitcoin is bouncing between the 60 and 70K level. So yeah, we are just trending sideways, just like I said, with a really big amplitude. And if we go to the previous bull run, we are still somewhere around this point right here. Right, so this was COVID crash somewhere here. Then we had halving somewhere around there. I think it was early May. And you know, we are now somewhere in June, somewhere in arguably in this phase right here, just going sideways for a while. Possibly we may see another pullback, but then what? see what happened later in that year and then early the following year. That was January 2021 here. So, it's perfectly reasonable to expect that this move is still ahead of us. Of course, it won't be quite as big, but nonetheless, it will be still a significant move up. So that's my take on the market. Is it possible that it's the end of this bull run? Yeah, of course, everything is possible. It will be extremely surprising, but it is a possibility. Personally, I think there are many reasons to expect that we are still in those early stages of the bull run, somewhere where we were right here in the previous market cycle. And I think we'll still see this massive, massive move up late this year and most likely throughout 2025. That's my opinion. All my actions in the market are based on that assumption. So I'm not selling my positions yet. Um, if anything, I'm accumulating or just holding steady. I'm just waiting what, what will happen in the market over the next six to 12 months, maybe even 18. That's, that's pretty much it. A big part of being successful in crypto is being patient. You have two options, actually. You can either be right on the ball and try to pick whatever is trending at the current point in time, get in and out as quickly as possible because trends change very quickly and that's how people make money with meme coins. Or you can look at bigger patterns and try to base your movements on, on that. It's still quite tricky. It takes much more time and patience, but as far as crypto is concerned, it's a little bit safer strategy. Nothing is safe when it comes to crypto, but at least it gives you slightly better chance of making it in, the, in this, well, very volatile space. That's it from me for today. Overall, I'm staying optimistic when it comes to crypto. I think the next few months will be relatively boring. And after that, we'll see. It should be quite exciting. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.